All right, so welcome everyone. Today's session is on the TDCX, our tablet data collector add-in. So just to kind of introduce the uh, introduce the option. For some reason, my slides are not proceeding here. There we go. Um, tablet data collector. If, if you have not encountered it before, um, uh, just a recap of, of kind of what it offers. Uh, you will put the ARM software on a, a Windows tablet that you can then take to the field, and so it has um, additional features. Um, compared to, to the regular ARM. And really uh, the goal of it, optimizing that, that smaller screen size to be able to be used for collecting data. So we'll see the, the keypad on the screen to, to press with, with the touch screen, uh, zooming to get, get your interface to be sized appropriately. We hide all the extra tidbits that you really don't need when you're just taking data within ARM. And then you can also take pictures uh, with the Windows camera app and that will link directly into your trial. Uh, you know, the assessments that you're taking, it's more than just a number and, and TDCX supports all, all of the different facets for an assessment. Uh, you can record GPS coordinates for that particular assessment value um, using, using the onboard GPS. You can take plot pictures um, for that assessment. Uh, if there's something odd or unusual, something went wrong in that plot, that, um, that assessment can be marked as damaged, so it is tossed out of the analysis. And then there's an open-ended uh, open comment field as well uh, to put in any information that, that may be necessary to add for that assessment. And of course, you know, want to collect data as efficiently as possible. Um, so there's one touch shortcut key keys on that touchpad uh, in order to enter, for example, a 100 and press the enter all in one key um, or zero and, and be able to kind of quickly go through the, the assessments. Uh, we'll, we'll demonstrate those later on as well. You can set the cursor order uh, to just, you know, kind of define the way you're going to move through the fields and through your assessments to match up with, with uh, what will be on the screen. So you just have to press enter and, and keep filling in your information. And since we are um, operating with the entire ARM software, you have all of the ARM trial at your fingertips to enter in any other information, whether it's you know application details or um, you know any 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 detail across the site description as well as your assessment uh, can be filled in with with the TDCX. And hopefully you'll see an, an improvement, uh, you know, an, an increase in, in the quality of the assessments by, by using some of these tools that the software can provide. Of course, we're gonna avoid any transcription errors because you're entering the values directly into the software and don't have that second stage of putting it onto paper and then paper into the software. Um, enforcing data range limits. Of course, ARM can pop in and say, hey, this is supposed to be a percent and you typed in a 112, that doesn't make sense, things like that. Uh, and then data review, uh, being able to review the data while you're on site is, is really important. And we'll kind of show those uh, features as well. Uh, protecting data is, is important. So there is a backup path in ARM, uh, you may be familiar with already, uh, TDCX takes that one step further and will quick save the, uh, the data at each plot. So as soon as you've finished with your assessments for a plot, you move to the next plot, ARM automatically, or I should say TDCX automatically saves um, to, to the backup, um, even if you don't press save specifically. Works really great if you throw in an, an SD card into that tablet uh, just to protect against hard drive failure. So that way it is, it is separate if something um, catastrophic were to happen to, to your unit while you're in the field, uh, then you have the SD card that could be removed and, and still have all that data that was recorded up, up to that point. GPS coordinates, we hinted at them earlier for individual plots. You can also do that um, on your trial corners as well for your site description. 
And so we just kind of show the trial map on the screen and, uh, and then you can walk to each corner. And again, yeah, press a button, it'll read the device, you know, the location of your device itself um, and, and put that into the, the site description values. So that's just kind of kind of a quick overview of, of what we have. I think it's a little more powerful to see it in action. So here I'm going to toggle to my ARM and open up a trial. So there is no special installation. Uh, when, when you get the, the TDCX, it's the same ARM software and it's all just linked to your license. Um, so if I pop up my about ARM, I have the TDCX, the tablet data collector component in with my license. So ARM just recognizes that um, and makes that those features available to me when I'm logged in. Um, of course, today I'm operating from my laptop. So there'll be a couple of, of um, workarounds for us. I'll be using my mouse the whole time instead of a the uh, the touch screen, um, but of course you would have that touch screen being installed on on a tablet device. And my GPS coordinates won't be terribly exciting because I won't be able to be very mobile. But um, at any rate, uh, to get started with the tablet data collector, you noticed everything was pretty much normal when I had my ARM open initially. Uh, it's not until you open up a trial file that you begin to see some of the differences. And you'll see that here on the navigation bar, uh, we have tablet related features. Those are also visible from the tablet menu at the top. And depending on where you're at, if I go into my site description, you may also see some shortcuts in the properties panel as well. So a few different places to access these different uh, features and functionalities. So here on my site description, if I had my properties panel open, you see a big record GPS button as well. That typically isn't there for just a regular ARM installation. So we'll start with this record GPS. You can see it is creating my, you know, drawing my trial map for me. So then on the screen, you can just click on whichever corner of the trial you're going to walk to. So maybe I'm going to walk to my, my starting plot 101 and want to stand right in that corner. And, and it's going to then, as we can see on the right, um, obtain my GPS location based on my device and where that device is at. This is kind of updating periodically based on, again, if I, if I could move my desk around, I could, I could make those numbers change, but there's not a lot I can do at the moment. Uh, it does show a GPS accuracy. So you can see mine is pretty rotten. Hopefully uh, a device, you know, a tablet device typically would have a better accuracy. And also if you're out in the field, you probably have a better access to, to the satellites, but you, uh, you can, uh, kind of wait until that stabilizes and, and you get a good location reading. And then when you're ready, you press the record GPS button. And that you can see now recorded the latitude and longitude values into the corner I had selected. Um, also took that accuracy and, and altitude reading um, if available. So you can click into different corners. If you want to do all four readings, you would just click into each one and then press the record GPS and it would fill in this table for us. Again, I'm a little limited. There's not a lot I can do. My GPS location isn't changing at all. So it's not ready to, to take my GPS. Um, so we'll just settle for the one value today. But when I press okay, now it will save those values into my site description. In our case, we did the lower left corner and it also put in the accuracy and the altitude that, that it was able to obtain. So a nice interface for, for recording that GPS. Moving to the next feature, let's go to the assessment data editor. Of course, kind of the main purpose of the, the TDC. Uh, in this trial, I have just a couple of assessments 
uh, that will want to do um, it just kind of copy pasted from a tutorial file. So it probably doesn't make sense. We'd be hand entering yield, but so be it. Um, and I also have one with uh, subsamples. So we can kind of demonstrate uh, some different capabilities. If you are working with subsamples, um, there's some options that will, will particularly apply. Uh, and then I've got this column one that's already been filled in for us. We'll be able to use that for the, the data review. But so to trigger the, the, uh, the data entry mode, again, we could use the properties panel. There's a big TDC, the tablet data entry button here. Or again, maybe I'll use the navigation bar just to show it all brings us to the same, same spot. <clears throat> and we're first presented with a short wizard to set up our assessment uh, you know, session that we're about to take. So we'll just kind of walk through these options. Uh, the first one is the sort order. So that's going to be what order should our plots appear um, in the editor. So that way it matches the order that we will be moving through the field. And so you could sort by plot or a treatment, um, but those typically don't match a real life what you would actually be doing. And so we have the assessment and harvest sort orders available to us. If you're not familiar with those, I'm going to cancel here. Those are editable on the trial map. And the trial map here, once it draws, has a section for movement arrows. So I'm going to zoom my map in a little bit so you can see those arrows. So there's an arrow here starting at 101 and it goes all the way across my field and then it goes up and starts at 905 and works its way back because I've set the serpentine within blocks. So instead of when we're done with plot 805, uh, it's very unlikely we want to walk all the way back, back to 201 just to go uh, and follow the, the plot numbering. So you can set, there's a variety of different orders just depending on which direction and, and which technique you, you use to walk through the field. You can customize that here. Um, and we really have two different sets. So depending on the, you know, the assessment would be typically you walking through the field uh, and then maybe the, the combine will be a different way that the equipment would be going through that field. And so you can have a totally different option here if, if you wanted to. I'll just pick within, um, well, nope, the way my replicates are set up, I can't choose that one. Uh, we'll just do within blocks, for example. Um, just to show you have two different two different options. But I think for TDC, this is most common one you would use is set your assessment order to match the way you're going to move through the field. So if you set that, um, set that up per trial, it can differ for each trial that you have. It's, it's part of the trial map and what's saved in memory for that trial. Then when we are entering our tablet data entry, that is that sort order that we will choose. The next option is our cursor order. So this will determine um, how, again, that we should move. In this case, if we're taking multiple assessments, how should we manage that? So I've got a slide that maybe explains that a little better, a little bit of a visualization for us. Um, so we're looking at the cursor order options. And in my case, uh, in this screenshot here, I've got three subsamples. I'm going to take two different assessments. So there's a couple of different ways you can um, handle that depending on your system. And we want you know TDC to be able to mimic that. So you aren't clicking in the editor to select the right box, but you can just say next next assessment and AURM or TDC will mimic that uh, behavior. So if you choose by column across plot, that's pretty straightforward. It's just going to go uh, straight down the column and Essentially, I'm just going to do one assessment and go through all of my plots. 
And then I'm gonna to return to the first assessment or to the first plot and take the second assessment is essentially what that will do. So pretty irrelevant whether you have subsamples or not. Um, it's just gonna go right down the field and then return to do another assessment. Might not be the most efficient method in some cases. So across columns within plot, now we will take a, you know, the, the sample will take a plot and we will perform the same, perform that assessment on all three subsamples. Then we'll move to the next assessment, but still stay at that same plot. And now we can take our subsamples, um, you know, perform that assessment on all of our subsamples uh, for that second assessment action we're going to take. Now we've completed, once we've completed that, we move to the next plot. And then we'll repeat that process. Let's do the subs, take the same assessment on all of the subsamples, then do the next assessment on each of the subsamples, move to the next plot. So that's the order for across columns within the plot. Now, maybe your subsamples, we need to do kind of the other direction instead. So I'm going to take a subsample and then I am going to perform each assessment on that subsample. So here, first subsample in my first plot, I'm going to do both assessments. Then I'll move to the next subsample and perform both assessments and then move to the next subsample, et cetera. Once I finished all of my subsamples, it'll just move to the next plot. And we'll do the first subsample of the next plot. So just depending on your method, depends on uh, probably the combination of what, what your experiment is set up for and what types of subsamples you might be performing, um, that cursor order then can match up with the, the actions you're taking. So in my case, I'm going to do across columns. Um, oops, across columns within plot um, for for our example. Next option here is is the view. So this will set the header rows for what we want to see on the screen. Again, we have you know only so much screen space available to us, so we try to really narrow down. Um, what rows are entirely necessary. So TDC has one by default that, that we recommend using. Certainly if you wanna kind of customize your, your TDC experience, you can create your own view. So this list is all of the assessment views that uh, can be created. So you certainly can, can do that. I'm gonna stick with the default um, for today's demonstration. Next option is which data columns are we going to rate? So we can either choose the select. And so then the next step, ARM will display the data editor for us to click on which assessments we want to take. Or if I know ahead of time that I, you know, which columns I want to take, in my case, it'll be numbers two and three, I can type in the the selection or if it's going to be two through eight you know you can do a range as well um, or maybe slightly more complicated but if, if you had applied a column filter uh, to your view so what you are looking at behind you are all of the columns that you want to rate then you can leverage a current view probably a little less common perhaps And we can rifle through some of these options. Most of them, you kind of just take the default. It's kind of the, the, the best way to handle TDC. Uh, but display treatment allows you to have the treatment number displayed while you're taking notes. Um, if you want the blind assessment, leave that off. If you need to reference the treatment number while you're taking the notes, you can turn that back on. Uh, typically, you want to keep this one off. If you have a bunch of data columns, that are calculated, then ARM 
uh, kind of behind the scenes, the ARM calculating and recalculating after every time you put in a data point will just slow down the system. So it makes a lot more sense to keep this off. And then when you're all done taking data, ARM can refresh the editor and do all those calculations all at once instead. Optimize screen layout, we mentioned how that'll hide like the navigation bar and, and the properties panel and things that aren't really needed on the screen. The shortcut keys we'll demonstrate in a moment, so we'll keep that on. There is an option to automatically record the GPS every time you enter an assessment data value. Uh, that one may, may be a little less common, but if you know you need that for every assessment, that can be handy to turn on. The camera app, we will, uh, we will show that here in a moment. I'm gonna turn that off for our first iteration and then we'll come back and show the, the picture taking. And then there'll be a click. I don't know if that'll come through on, on the webinar or not, but it is kind of nice when you're pressing the keypad on the screen. Of course, you don't have a physical press. So some people like that, that kind of verification um, through a little click, click noise that the system will make um, can kind of give you something close to it at least to know if you, you know, accidentally miss a, a click um, as, you're, as you're typing. Um, so that, that light, it's very, very subtle, um, but is, is enough to at least kind of help you uh, if, if you feel like you missed something out. And then finally, the trial backup, that is uh, what we mentioned previously for saving the backup to your backup path. If you're finding that when you leave a plot to go to the next plot as you're taking data, it seems like the system's really slow, um, you can you know, increase that so you have less of that latency um, at the cost of just you know, how often that backup will happen. All right, we're gonna press next here. Then there's one more prompting uh, and this is for pictures. So again, we will kind of skip, skip over that for the moment and we'll, we'll come back. So I'm just going to finish here so we can demonstrate the, the note taking at least. All right, so this is really how the screen changes as, as we said, um, try to uh, you know, kind of optimize what we're looking at for a, a small screen size on a tablet. So we have our description of our assessments here to the left. Um, and again, the, the choice of those rows were de derived from our view. And now we've got our just the data columns that we had marked um, in our wizard to, to be taking notes. And on the right, we have our properties panel that has our, our keypad. And in my case, I haven't optimized this. We kind of have a one-time a one thing that you can do when you first start out is you can change the, the size of this keypad to better match uh, the resolution on your tablet. So down here, there is this, this arrow button that will allow you to resize the keypad. So I am pressing the up key a few times since it looks like it's just a little taller than my screen allows. That's pretty good. I can maybe actually make it go a little bit. There we go. That matches it pretty well. And maybe I want it a little wider, whatever, whatever um, works best. And then I click away and it'll resize all that text and those buttons to, to fit nicely on the screen. And it'll remember that selection uh, moving forward for you. So, so getting it configured should be a one-time one -time job, hopefully. So uh, just, I guess, taking, taking data, pretty straightforward, hopefully. We're in that plot 101. And uh, to reiterate in our example, I've got five subsamples uh, to take for the first assessment. And the second assessment has just one subsample uh, to, to take. So here at plot 101, I'm just going to type in some numbers, again, utilizing that touch keypad. And then when I press Enter, you'll see that the cursor moves to the next plot. Again, we, we told ARM logically what it is I want to perform next. 
So that way, hopefully I'm not constantly thinking about where do I need to be on the screen, but more naturally just filling in the data. So here's the second subsample for the same assessment. And I can type it in and press enter. Using some of these keyboard shortcuts, if I press this 100 shortcut, that will give us the 100 value all in one click, as well as press the enter to move to the next plot. Similar situation for the zero, it will enter zero and move to the next plot. We can also copy down, so that will take whatever value is directly above us on the editor. So what, what did I just type in? Well, this assessment, you know, this uh, plot, or in our case, subsample is the same as the last one. So I'll just press copy down. And that will take that zero here. If I step back for just a moment, that took that very same value from up above, <coughs> excuse me, and puts that in the that, that that cell we were just in. And then it forward, it took us forward, which in our case, since we were done with our five subsamples, moves us to the next assessment. And here we're doing our second assessment. So I can fill that in, pressing enter will take us to the next plot. Now we're at plot 102. Uh, the last, last button here is a missing. So uh, the best way to enter in a missing value in ARM is the period. That way it's not blank, which would make you wonder, did I just accidentally forget to put something in? No, I really mean there is no value to record here. So there's, there's the period. Um, and that puts in the period and presses enter. Of course, if you were more manual, you could type in the period and press enter yourself, uh, but it's just kind of saving you a click. Uh, to demonstrate some, some uh, data limits, ARM can be kind of in, intelligent. Oh, I have to update my rating unit min max. Let me unwind that for a moment. The uh, kind of a, a newer feature in ARM, uh, the rating unit, we have a minimum and a maximum. And that is where you can specify the minimum and maximum values allowed for a particular assessment. Previously, it could key off of your rating unit. And that's why I was just used to it triggering automatically. Uh, but here I want to have my rating unit minimum and maximum. Then um, as you're entering data, TDC can let you know if you, if you type something in that's not in that range. So my example here is a percentage. There's no way I should be above 100 or you know less than zero. So if I accidentally, you know, I'm trying to type just 10, but I, I fat finger and press that one twice, I end up with 110. TDC pops up. There is a, a ding. I'm not sure if that comes through, um, but there's there's a loud ding and there's this prompt that before we move on, hey, this doesn't make sense what you told me. Um, data in this column should be between zero and 100 and you typed in 110. Certainly if you, if you don't want that minimum and maximum, you can simply clear those values out. So you could cancel here and clear them out or you go, oh, thank you, that's exactly what I need. Uh, I only meant 10, then you can type that on the screen and it'll change that value before moving on. So a nice way to catch uh, catch some some accidental errors um, as they happen uh, instead of later on. Looking at this this other information here, we had mentioned um, in addition to the value that you can record, there is a comment, so you can you know type in information, um, any other additional details that you might have for a particular assessment. We can set the GPS. So this is a button here. And when you click that button, it will do just like we saw before. It'll read my device's current location. And in this case, it'll store those values in here. So it's specifically tied to this assessment and actually this subsample in, in this case. 
Finally, there's also a damaged marker. So that um, is a way to record a value, but also remove it from analysis. So in my case, uh, something extreme happened. Uh, there's some, some problem with this plot or this particular subsample I'm taking, um, but maybe I still want to perform the assessment. Uh, I can have that value. And then the damaged marker, if I click out of this cell, maybe I'll click enter here to move on, you can see that there's a red line that's through that value. So marking a assessment as damaged then will have it be treated just the same as this missing value when it comes to the analysis, but we have the, the opportunity to do all of this recording anyway. So we can still have the, the value that we took, have the comment and all of that extra information for this you know, unusual situation that, that may have happened. So being able to, to document all of that information, um, I think is, is important to do, um, even if in the end, when we're doing analysis, that is, you know, that plot has nothing to offer us, but we can still have that information recorded. There's also a red triangle. So that is if you have any of this you know, the comment or the GPS, or later on when we show the image, that'll happen as well. Um, so may, let me just enter in more information here um, and then a value. Then you can see here, we don't have the strike through because we didn't mark it as damaged, but that red triangle tells you that there's more information here than just that value. And so that's the comment or the GPS or the image. So that's, I think that's really the, the bulk of the, the data entry um, functionality. Hopefully it's, you know, it's mostly straightforward and, and intuitive um, to actually fill in the values. A lot of it just comes back to those, those options in that wizard um, to get things set up. So ARM, so TDC really understands what you're going to do when you're uh, taking your assessments. So then it's just a matter of, like I said, typing in with the key, keypad and, and not so much worrying about where you are on the screen, um, but just taking the assessment and recording the assessment. Uh, hopefully that is, is you know, beneficial to have that, that set up that, that way. So I'm going to exit our tablet data entry. That's the way to kind of close down. All right, we're done with our assessment or whatever. In my case, I want to close down just so we can actually reopen and uh, demonstrate the, the pictures. So if I go into our tablet data entry again to set up, I'll keep pretty much all the same options. But in this case, I can launch the camera app. So for TDC, we don't, we, I guess I should say the, the TDC software doesn't specifically have a camera tool embedded in it. Instead, we utilize the whatever camera app is in the system, which really works best that the Windows um, by default have a camera app that comes installed. So that usually works best, but certainly if you have your own favorite you get from the app store, there's a way to kind of connect that up. Um, but really we'll just leverage whatever camera app is on the system. Um, and when you take a picture with that camera app, then TDC is actually just listening in the background for an image to appear. So to kind of demonstrate that here, let's go back to my PowerPoint uh, just to show that process of, of how that works. So we're using that camera app. And when you take a picture with that camera app, it of course you know, takes the picture and saves it onto you know, typically the camera roll folder on, on your tablet. And it's usually named with some you know, gibberish, you know, auto-generated number. Um, as the file name. TDCX is listening while we're in that ent data entry mode. It's listening for that. And as soon as the picture appears, it knows, hey, 
I must have just taken a picture. So let me rewind just a second. It will copy that image that was sitting in the camera roll folder, and then it will move it, take that copy. So I guess more logically, it's going to copy that image over to the folder where your ARM trial file is. Then we will rename that image to be something a little more useful. So we can have the trial ID, your treatment number, plot number, whatever little system that you want to have for the, the name of that image um, will automatically be renamed as well. So now it is saved in that trial folder, you know, the same folder as your trial is at. It is now named with that trial ID and some identifying information about what plot and assessment it is. And then that image is linked to the ARM trial. So um, if you're familiar with how, in general, attachments work in ARM, we're not actually embedding the image file in the, the trial file. That would, you know, it could really balloon the, the size of a trial. Instead, we're just saving the path. It's really just a link to where that image is. And so that linkage then is done. This particular assessment value that we just recorded is now linked to that image, which is saved in the same folder as our trial. So that's kind of behind the scenes as we go ahead and, and demonstrate this process for, for taking pictures. So I chose to automatically launch that app. Um, I can certainly open it up on my own if I wanted um, as well. If you suddenly realize in the middle of taking picture, you know, in the middle of taking an assessment, you go, oh, shoot, I wish I had chosen that option. Well, there, whether or not you turn that on, uh, TDC is, is ready to take pictures. So all you would have to do is open up the camera app on your own and take a picture and the same process will happen. So here uh, in the second step, for our data entry are those options for how to deal with these images. So the first one are those two actions we talked about. Um, do I wanna copy the image to the same folder where my trial is at? If I don't want to do that, I can at least have the image renamed. Or if I'm copying it, then we're gonna rename it automatically as well because that auto-generated name doesn't do anyone any good anyway. So um, we may as well rename it if you're going to copy it. Then down here are the options to set up the, the renaming scheme for those images. So you can choose from the trial ID, the treatment number, the assessment date, uh, the plot number, subsample number. If, you, if you're going to take a picture for every subsample uh, that you have, you can include that on there. Uh, then there's also a column ID. So if I was going to take um, a picture for each assessment on that same day, then this would be a way to ensure that um, it's unique. So you wouldn't have um, two pictures trying to be named the exact same, one for column two and one for column three, essentially. So you can see as I turn these on or off, down here is just a simple preview of what the, the name of that file is going to look like. And so I can change the order around. Right now I have the trial ID and then the treatment number. Maybe I want the treatment number farther down uh, so I can move this, this number here is really which, you know, which part of that, um, which component should it be. So now I move treatment to the third spot maybe plot I want to actually have seconds. I want trial ID, plot number, assessment date, treatment. Whatever order you like, you can customize and move those around um, to match your, your system. And then we have uh, letters to, to indicate, so you don't just have the number 101 um, and 003, then you're not quite sure what those might mean. Uh, kind of nicer to have those letters uh, and then it'll also sort a little better as well if you're sorting like in Windows Explorer, um, having those those prefix letters makes it makes it more readable, I think. 
finally, you can take more than one image per plot it, uh, if you would like as well. So uh, this would be, you can, you can turn this up if you expect to take multiple pictures for a plot. I'm gonna just stick with the one for now. All right, so what's going to happen? You can see we opened up ARM. It also opened our camera app. So we can see me talking here, not nearly as exciting as a field, but uh, what we can do, kind of two different options for, for taking the pictures. Um, if you want, you can toggle back and forth. So we can be you know, taking our data just like we had done before. And I'll maybe enter in my assessment value. And then I can just switch over to the camera. And here I've got a pretend field, so we don't have to see my ugly mug in the pictures. Um, I'll take that picture with the camera, and then I can just come back over to ARM, to TDC. And it looks like I messed up my options. Here's a little look behind the scenes since I messed this up. Um, in the, the file options, the, the images path is where we should be looking. And it looks like I've moved that from the default, which would explain why TDC didn't find that picture I just took. So it should be my camera roll, which would be the default if you weren't messing around. I tend to mess around with my ARM installation a lot. So let's try that once more. We'll put in an assessment value. Then we will switch over to our camera, take another, another wonderful picture here. There we go. So now back in ARM, we have attached that picture. So we can see it a little larger uh, if we would like. And it's associated here with that plot. You can see, um, since I have subsamples, I just attach it to the first subsample. Um, so I would want to have chosen to do like five assessments or five pictures per plot if I was planning to take multiple um, images, you know, an image for each subsample. So maybe I'll make it a little simpler and come over to, to column three to do our pictures. Um, so once again, you know, you can fill in your value then toggle to the camera and take the picture. And then in ARM, you'll see uh, that TDC has attached the picture and it also pressed enter for us since we had a value filled in already. So now we're ready to, to take that next assessment. Um, it was already on to plot 104. If, you, if you're taking a lot of pictures you can, and you have kind of a large enough screen, uh, we can actually have ARM kind of share the screen with the camera. So under the window menu, you can dock ARM to one side of the screen or another. So here in my orientation, I'd like to dock ARM or TDC to the right. And so it will put TDC in about two thirds of the screen and then it'll, if it can find the, the, D, the, the Windows camera app, it'll put the camera app in that other portion of the screen. So they're still both their own separate windows, but we've just had ARM kind of arrange the windows. So now we can do the same process here, you know, fill in my value, take a picture, and now it's moved to the next value. Um, just to show the other direction, if you take a picture first, it will attach that picture, but notice we haven't moved from the assessment yet because we didn't fill in our value. So just depending on your order of operations, um, TDC won't leave until you actually have an assessment value to record. So that's, that's leveraging the, the, the camera app. 
Uh, just so everyone knows, in case you were unaware of the renaming functionality, um, outside of TDC, just your typical regular ARM, um, you actually can do the, the image attaching and renaming steps. Uh, so we have a webinar on that. You can use this attach button just when you're in regular ARM to attach a set of pictures you maybe took with your phone or your digital camera. Um, and there's a little wizard that helps you connect them all up and ARM can rename all of those image files the same way we're doing here today with the TDCX. So TDCX has the advantage of you're taking the picture live and that very same second you take the picture, it's attached, it's renamed and it's all with the trial but you can leverage that renaming system and the attaching system without TDCX, just in your regular ARM. Um, like I said, we've, we've ran a, a webinar before. You can check out our website if you want, want to kind of see how that works. But um, the live capture of the picture is unique to TDC, but kind of the rest of that process, you can use, have ARM do already, so. All right, last but most definitely not least, in fact, I would argue is probably the most significant part of TDC would be when we finished taking the data. So there's data review functionality that um, I think is, is very important. And of course, we've, we've got ARM, you know, the, the key here, and I keep calling it ARM, um, mistakenly, as I'm referring to a TDC feature, you, you've probably noticed, um, but it's because we're running the full ARM software just with the additional TDC features. So, so everything you can do on your computer um, in your ARM, you have the ability to do while you're at the trial site probably a good portion of those functionalities you're, you're not going to use, but uh, we have that, that capability. And, and I think leveraging the data review tools is, is probably about the biggest impact that, that TDC can offer. So I'm going to leverage this first data column that has um, our whole assessment here. Uh, so I'm going to re-enter our data entry mode and just pretend that we um, have already filled that we just got done using TDC to take this column of data. So uh, I'll just zip down. Okay, just finished with the very last plot and now we're all done. Up here on the properties panel, we have the most common data review tools to utilize. And I wanna start with the last one here, which I think is about the best kept secret of ARM as a whole, um, and really is kind of the home run hitter, I think for TDCX. And that is the assessment map. So this tool draws a trial map for us, but instead of coloring by treatments, it takes the assessment values that we've recorded in this column number one, and draws a heat map. So it'll take the lowest value found in the column, it'll take the highest value found in the column and split it up up to 10 different color um, shades of this green. So we can see visually and spatially what this assessment really was. So there's, there's a ton of power here um, the first, first use, I think, is it's really easy to spot an outlier. And you might already notice a pretty obvious one here. 904 is so much darker than anything else on the, the map. And if I click on 904, it'll actually color by current treatment. So we can see how that treatment for performed and all the other replicates across the field and for some reason here in Replicate 9, it was just so much larger than anything else. So the great power to the TDCX is that we're still, we can see this information while we're still at the trial site. If we just finished hand typing 
from our sheet of paper, you know, a day later when we got back to the office or, you know, the next rainy day, there's not a whole lot we can do at this point. Okay, 904 is really weird. We can go to 904 on our editor and we can say, hmm, 120, that doesn't seem right. But if we've left the trial site, if we're days later, there's not much we can do. About the best case is we can decide whether this must be wrong and we should throw it away, mark it as damaged and get rid of it is about the best case scenario for us if we're doing this after the fact. But with TDCX, we don't even have to wait till we get to the truck to find out if this um, is, is strange. So we can walk right back over to plot 904 and look at the plot and say what, what went wrong. Now in this case, okay, 120 is, is not physically possible. For, for our percentage. Um, so, so that one obviously was a mistype, but now we can take that assessment again to decide, is it a 12, is it a 20, is it a 10? You know, what, what was the mistake? I, I don't know what the right value is. Uh, again, if we're just um, going off of what information was recorded previously. So I can make that adjustment if it, if it is clearly a, you know, a mistype, Okay, let's adjust that value. Let's do it right. And then we can draw our assessment map again. And we'll see correcting that incorrect value. Suddenly we have you know, a little more in, you know, a little more informational um, image here. Now we don't have that crazy outlier uh, that's clearly wrong, kind of dragging everything. Um, I guess dragging everything else down. It made everything else look pretty watered down. So we could repeat, that looks like the next, still have kind of a high value here, the 203. Um, so maybe that's another plot that we should go investigate. So plot 203 here, I'm sorted by my, here we go, we have a 65. Well, that is physically possible. Um, so in our case, we can't just automatically assume something was wrong with what we typed in. So again, let's leverage the, the features we have available to us. Let's go look at the plot and maybe we say, yeah, you know what, this, this is a 65. Something really weird happened at this plot. So we can go ahead and let's take a picture. Let's put in comments and, you know, document what, what exactly was, was going on. Because if you're just looking at this list of numbers later on, somebody might say, well, that can't be right. And, and would be tempted just to throw it away. Well, here we can say, no, it, it happened, it's true. There's a picture right here. You can see that, that something strange happened. And, and I wrote down this information because I was still at the trial site when I noticed this strange value and uh, we made sure that it was accurate. And then just one more, just to, just to highlight that assessment map again, um, the assessment map is something you can generate within your regular ARM. Uh, again, if you're not in the field, you're, you, you have limited options as to what to do with the data, but this is a critical a tool for data review, whether you're at the, the trial site still, or you're looking at the data in, in the office. And it can be really great just to see site-wide oddities. Maybe a whole corner is, is lighter than others, or there's a strip right down the middle that's darker, or, you know, you can, you can catch some spatial things that are, you know, just pop out on the screen from you, even though you may not necessarily notice them just from the list of numbers you typed in. So that's a, a really great tool. Uh, just to point out the, the other ones, we do have a box whisker. You can generate a box whisker graph if you'd like. Uh, that can be useful. Let me put these labels as a legend so we can just kind of view the, the box whisker 
probably at least for for the data review portion, the biggest thing you'd look at would be the the height of the boxes would give you a, a good um, estimate for the variance in each treatment. So you can get a feel for how variable each treatment was. It looks like treatment three wasn't very variable compared to treatment two, um, but there was an outlier. So kind of the other, the other thing you can see with the box whisker is the X's are outliers. And if I hover over them here, uh, you can see it's plot 705. So it's been calculated at least that plot 705 is an unusual value that might be worth investigating. So that's another option there on the box whisker. Uh, you can view an AOV means table if you want. Not sure how appropriate that would be um, when you're in the field, you know, to see to see the results. But you know, depending on the situation, uh, you have that av available to you at least. All right, well, that's, that is uh, really it for uh, the demonstration of TDCX. Kind of run, running out of time here. I have a few more slides that I could run through real quickly, uh, but I did want to just uh, make sure to offer up a, a moment for questions uh, if anyone had them. I'll just hit, hit the highlights here on the rest of these slides. Um, if, if there aren't any other questions, uh, just to point out that TDCX, as we said, is ARM. So uh, you're working with the trial file. And so there's um, different ways to um, access those trial files with that tablet. Um, the best case is use either a network drive or cloud storage um, and connect that tablet to those drives, just the same as any other computer in the office, basically. Um, and then the cloud storage will make it available offline with a network drive. Windows usually lets you keep an offline version of that file locally. So that way, when you're out in the field with no internet access, that trial file is, is on the hard drive itself so you can make changes. And then as soon as you connect back up to the network or you know, connect to the internet with cloud storage, it'll sync. Uh, you can manually copy. Uh, we used to use a sync cable that can work. It's a little more manual. And licensing, um, the TDCX that lives on the same device as an ARM license. So a lot of times what you would do is purchase our field bundle. So you can get an, another ARM installation on that Windows tablet with the TDC features while still having your ARM on your main computer, wherever that is. Um, some people uh, like to try to squeeze it all in one. So you could have a device, a you know, Windows tablet that's powerful enough to connect to like a docking station. That way you can ha use it in the office like normal, but then unplug and take it out to the field. So that's another option of just how the licensing would work. Uh, I could go on for 20 minutes straight about hardware requirements. I'm kind of a, a tech junkie. Um, so if you if you are thinking about a tablet data collector, but you're not quite sure what's a good tablet, what should I be looking for in purchasing a tablet, um, shoot us an email. I, I'd love to talk talk tech and, and give some recommendations. We've got a lot of information on our website as well. Um, to just you know talk about recommendations and things we have seen either from when we used to um, sell the you know we kind of used to buy tablets configure them and send them out and then we've also just heard feedback now that you can you know buy your own tablet uh, now uh, we still get some feedback from people that just like to share uh, their experience and that again that's that's kind of the quick and dirty of the the hardware um, but I've had a, the first person that took me up on that offer and sent me a link on Amazon and said, is, is this the right one? And the one they had selected had the Android um, operating system. So real quickly, I'm like, no, no, you don't want that one. We need to have Windows. So it was, it was really good 
uh, example just right out of the gates, uh, just, just to make sure all the boxes are checked, uh, just to send those to us. Um, we can help with that, so. Well, I'm out of time. I don't wanna hold anyone hostage here. So uh, thank you all for, for attending. Uh, if you have any questions, like I said, reach out to us. Um, if you're looking at different, different units, um, maybe we'll, we'll get to see you next week as well to talk about kind of the other uh, data collector option that we have for, for the ARM Mobile too. So thanks everybody.